Alrighty. Now, as usual, I'm just going to share it with a group if I can remember how to do it now. Um, share to a group. Let's get this one sorted out. Welcome, guys. Hope everybody is uh, super excited because I know I sure as sure as heck am super excited. This one is going to be fantastic. I'll be waiting to have uh, Yasmin on for a little while, and uh, yeah. I know there's going to be some great content shared in this story and everything tonight. So you can see a few people already jumping on. Let me show, just throw a couple of waves that way. Um, so yeah, so I can see Yasmin's jumped on here. So we'll uh, we'll get her on in a second. So first and foremost, uh, another LWO live LWO live chat. I appreciate you all for being here. As I said, I'm super excited to have Yasmin on tonight because, well, she's just a legend. There's no two ways about that. She's uh, going to obviously share her story tonight uh, from moving from a job into coaching and passion and everything that she's involved with moving forward. So I'm super excited. Um, I know there's a lot of people in the um, in the message that I put up the other day just saying who was going to be on uh, live chats this week. There was a lot of activity in there, so I'm sure there's a few of the really excited to have her on. So I am going to stop talking and I'm just going to bring her on. Add. as it tells me that it is adding. Oh, hey, Emma. I hope you are doing well. Oh, oh hello. Hey. Gonna... Oh, now you're upside down. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I had... Oh, had, had, <laughs> had upside, no, down. To me, go. upside down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's why I messaged before saying have it on sideways because I had somebody jump on before and I think they had it vertically and then they would sideways to themselves and that's why I was like, I don't know. Hey Gemma. Anyway. Hello. So good to see you. <laughs> it's been ages. I know. I know it has. It really has. And you know, what better way? Like literally what well, it's been a good number of months since we last spoke. And you know, what better way than to do it in such a public forum as Facebook Live, you know? Yeah. Why not? And that's what that's what technology is for now, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, and drop some knowledge bombs in the process and inspire some people. I think it sounds like a pretty damn good option to me. Well, we always seem to have pretty good chats, and I always think, God, I wish I recorded that. So now we've got it recorded. Should be quite this good. Is tr <laughs> this is true, and no pressure nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but if it doesn't happen, it's fine. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be good. I can see a lot of people jumping on, which is awesome to see. There was a lot of a lot of comments and a lot of uh, activity on the post that I put up with yourself. So I think there's a lot of people. Well, look, from an outsider's perspective, watching your social media, you get a lot of engagement in your post. You are somebody who is loved by a lot of people. It is very evident from the outside. So it's super exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's always just uh, I was so humbled and um, grateful by who um, resonates with what I talk about and what I share and. Um, it's really just been so nice to connect with so many people just by being vulnerable and open about my own experience. And I think that's kind of the nicest thing about social media is that you never know who you're going to meet um, just by sharing yourself a little bit and sharing your truth. So, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So are you going to hold that phone the whole time or have you got, have you got somewhere yeah, to put look, it on? I mean, the <laughs> at the moment uh, where, <laughs> where I am aren't the best. Um, I'll tell you about that in a bit, I'm sure. Um, in a minute. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. You're good. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, cool. That works perfectly. I was just thinking okay. some, sometimes these chats go for 45 minutes, an hour or so. Yeah, I'm You're going gonna... <laughs> <laughs> to... <laughs> Absolutely. I've got mine set up here on a tripod, so it's all, all sturdy. Oh, yeah, that's so you, Brett. <laughs> With the <tripod>. <laughs> <laughs> I've even got it plugged in because it's got no battery. So, you know, why not? <laughs> You've done we'll just wing it <laughs> once or twice. It's not my first rodeo. All right, well, let's, yeah. let's dive right into it. So let's dive in with your story. Like, um, start from wherever you feel called to start. Uh, and I know that we'll get some great value out of it as we move through. And, and as I said, we'll just we'll keep flowing with it. Okay, um, cool. So... 
Um, oh, it's been a big journey. Um, so basically I started, uh, funnily enough, I'm going to go with this. Okay, this is interesting. So um, I actually started the journey really when I left school. And at that point in life, you know, I was surrounded and I felt so much pressure about, um, you know, deciding what I was going to do with myself in my life, you know. And even at the age of 17, I felt this immense amount of pressure and I was extremely stressed out about the fact that I was finishing school and I needed to make this choice about what I was going to do with myself. And at that point in time, I really had this belief that what I chose was exactly what I had to follow through with and that was it. And so you could imagine at 17 thinking, I have to choose one thing I'm going to do for the rest of my life. That's scary as hell (laughs) and so overwhelming and kind of irrational to be honest. So that was where my mind was at at that point. (laughs) And I actually even remember talking to my dad and um, having an absolute meltdown and saying, you know, um, I just feel like there's not enough time. There's so many things I want to do with my life and myself. There's not enough time and I just feel so overwhelmed by it all. And he kind of just, you know, laughed with compassion and kind of just said, you know, you've got more time than you really know, to be honest. (laughs) And you really don't need to worry, you know, even if you do take a year off and you just – take time to find out. And, you know, that was probably one of the most, um, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was someone just saying, you know what, doesn't matter if you don't know what you want to do. It doesn't matter if you don't know where you're going, take the time and give yourself the space to find out. And I feel like that's just such a great lesson, no matter where you are in life, no matter if you're 17 or whether you're 35 or, you know, 20, it does you know, it kind of rings true in every year of my life. I kind of keep remembering that and it really doesn't matter. And there's really no race either. Um, Mm. But I'll tell you about the story a little bit more because I did still get into the mindset that it was a race. So um, after I finished school, I went into a retail traineeship and then I went into doing PT, which I loved. And it was really my passion. It was really exciting. I guess what I noticed was from a very early age, I loved helping people. I loved Um, sharing my wisdom and my knowledge with others. And I really just wanted to make a difference. I wanted people to feel good. And I noticed how when I helped myself and I made myself feel better, how much impact that had on every area of my life. I wanted to help others have that. I wanted to help them feel that. And even if it was just on a physical level, you know, sharing that with people and helping them in some little way was just amazing for me. So I did that for a really long time. And then throughout that, I started to notice a sort of pattern, I guess, with people I was working with a lot of the women, you know, had more issues around their mindset than they did around their actual body. It wasn't really about the fact that they couldn't exercise or eat right. It was really what was going on behind the scenes, why they were eating the way they were eating, why the patterns were the way they were and why they had these self-sabotaging sort of cycles and behaviors and where that was coming from. And then why were these people never satisfied, even though they had the result they were after? And then Why were these people never able to get the results they wanted and never felt deserving of it? You know, so there was all these little things that I started to become aware of. And for me, at that time, I realized, you know, there must be something more, right? Well, of course. Uh, So that really took me on a journey to start understanding the mind and its part in uh, not just physical success and, and outcomes, but also in just life in general, you know, and, And what was the difference between, first it was just what was the difference between people that could be successful in what they wanted and people that couldn't and and where that was falling short. So that's what took me on to then talking to a man um, about NLP and Mm. neurolinguistic programming. Kind of just popped up. I think the universe always kind of throws you things or things just kind of align when you're ready for them. So I ended up going into that course and it was the best thing I ever did. And that was truly life-changing for me because I didn't realise how much of the past was still very much so limiting my life and limiting the way I was seeing my world and seeing my reality and really tainting it and creating these lenses where I was searching for things that confirm my beliefs of unworthiness and not being good enough and, and, you know, weird money stories and just so many things that I had carried with me, you know, my whole life. And I I wasn't even aware of it consciously. Mm. So that was truly life changing. And I, I noticed the potency of neuro linguistic programming by doing that course. And after then, I was just like, this is the only thing I want to do. You know, I've experienced that. I've seen so many people shift in seven days. And, you know, there's this study to be done around that. But it was just incredible to me. I just couldn't even understand the fact that P 
people were making serious change in not even an hour. And, yeah. and to me, I was just like, there's something I have to share. So yeah. that's kind of what leads me <laughs> here, really. <laughs> and here I am. It's such a wonderful journey. And uh, NLP was one of the first things that I dived into as well as a client and, and realising how impactful it was for me and then realizing how much of an impact that it could make on other people and i completely resonate with it's just absolutely a wonderful gift that you you could give to others and uh can be such an elegant form of um i don't want to use the word therapy but that's what's coming up in my mind but just um coaching and support and uh working through some of those limitations yeah and i feel it, it brings this element of being able to see your problems or what you're being faced by your challenges, not with judgment or criticism and resentment towards yourself, but with a lot more openness and understanding and acceptance to really mm. let go of things and move forward freely. That's what I feel about it, you know, and yeah, it's just powerful, <laughs> powerful, powerful <Absolutely>. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that I truly enjoy about it as well, and um, I guess it, it is unique in some ways and other forms of, I don't know, I'm using the wrong sort of words that I don't really enjoy use, but, you know, the counsellings or the coaching or I guess the coaching, that sort of thing, is the fact that through my own experience, like with NLP, the person who is going through the or is being taken through the process doesn't actually have mm. to convey what it is that's going on. They can just go mm. into the memory. They don't have to tell – you don't have to convey it. I know when I was doing my practitioner certification, I was working with a lady and I have no idea what memory was that she was working with. But all I know, mm. it was something extremely intense and she had a massive shift. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just, at, I'm just looking at the comments here. Got Gemma and Steph, two old work colleagues, and they're <laughs> catching up on the live chat. Hey, girls. <laughs> <laughs> so <Hi> good. Guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's one of the things that I find extremely powerful. Now, I want to come back to the coaching in a mo moment and the NLP side of things. And, and I have, a, did you, in some of the other space, I just want to take a step back to one of the things that you said in around the personal, uh, the personal training aspect about yeah. when you gave to yourself more that you could give to others more. You had that realization. Mm -hmm. I just want you to speak or invite you to speak in and around that because I was having conversations with some people the other day and look, I know from my own personal experience when I stepped into this world of going, you know what, I'm going to worry about me and uh, I finally got logically and to my soul and everything like that, the concept of putting your own oxygen mask on first. So just speak through that realization of giving to you before you can give to others or giving to you before you give to others. Um, how that showed up, what sort of internal dialogue was going on through the time, and then on the other side of that full realisation as to how that actually, I guess, transpired. Okay. That's a, such a great question. I'm excited about this. Uh, and to be quite honest, you know, at the time, so um, I'll just go through it, when I was PTing and then I was deciding, okay, you know, I've got to do this thing. And actually it wasn't until I was on the phone to the guy who runs the course, his name is Paul, I was chatting to Paul about, you know, why I wanted to do it. You know, I really wanted to help my clients more and better them and, and get better results and all of these things. And then he kind of asked me, you know, well, what are you doing? Like, what is it about you that wants to do this course? You know, what are you doing for yourself? And I kind of, again, hadn't even thought about that. Again, I was still thinking about how I can serve others and, and what that will do and also what that could then do for me. But it was still coming from how I could serve. And when he sort of asked me that, I broke down because I'd realized how many things I'd still been avoiding of my own stuff that wasn't making me feel very good or very worthy or, or very happy. Um, and instead of facing that, I chose to give to others to avoid my actual stuff, which is something we can do mm. at times, right? So that was an amazing point at, at learning, one, to focus on myself, but also that if I don't serve myself and I don't work through my own stuff, then in some ways I can't serve or help others in a way that's most powerful or potent for them too. And that was like the first step in knowing, and it was still on a logical level. And it actually wasn't until this year that it became like a full on integration of being like, wow, I totally get this now because still yeah. I wasn't avoiding myself this time. I was still, you know, very much aware of myself and very much still working on my own staff and, and then helping others. But what I realized was when I went away just recently on holiday, I went on a big month holiday where I didn't do really any coaching. 
And mm-hmm. I haven't done that, you know, the last 18 months. I've been full on coaching nonstop, serving, serving, serving. And when I took that break, I realized that I was still living for other people and it wasn't actually mm. putting enough into myself and my life, not just my business, because that was something I put into, but my actual life and my own experience was still, wow, like this is something I haven't filled enough. And when I started to realize, okay, I came back and realized I need to make some changes because I need more space to live my own life as much as I'm helping others learn to live theirs. And when I did that, it was just like this huge like explosion moment of being like, oh my God, I get it. This makes so much sense. And from that place, I've been so much more happy and energized and able to help others because I'm actually living my life first. <laughs> so that's yeah, my lesson. Yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> There is so much good content in that. I've got some more questions I'm going to dive into. And I just wanted to throw it to the everybody who's watching. Like, if you're getting any value out of this, by all means, give it some likes. Give it some hearts. Let us know that you're, you're loving this content. Because <laughs> we're, we're only just getting started. <laughs> so Literally. You mentioned, oh, totally. You mentioned in there around, uh, and this is something that I had a realization for myself. Um, with the way that you were serving others, would you? how would you transport? Oh, um, not transpose that, not the right word. How would you, I guess, um, relate to that in, in the sense of, is it from a people pleasing perspective or was it, I'm just going to leave it there. Would you say that you were people pleasing when it was a case of serving others? Uh, I'm just trying to think about that just one second. So initially, before I started NLP, yes, it was always coming from a place of needing mm-hmm. to please others. Something I'd kind of been yep. conditioned to do and something that I felt that I was only of value if I was pleasing. So that's a, a belief that I had in it and something I worked through um, early on in my coaching journey, which I realized, wow, because I'd really overextend myself and really offer almost too much of myself. It's almost like I'd abandon myself every time just to please someone, just to... Um, Then as I went on, I realized that it was more about my own, and this is going to be really vulnerable and open, but it was more about my own significance that when I was serving others and helping others live their best life, that was giving me significance. It was giving me that feeling of, yay, I'm helping. I feel useful in that way, different, but similar. So it wasn't like I needed to please people, but it was more that I knew I would get something from helping and it wasn't, and, and it became conditional basically. So that's when I went on this kind of huge, um, I guess, moment of waking up a little bit and realizing, wow, like, this is where I'm still coming from. So I adjusted the way I was actually working and went, I want to come from a place that isn't about what I can get from serving others. Because I know that that's something we kind of can come to is realizing I'm still getting a lot. And it's okay to get that, right? Um, yeah. But it wasn't. It wasn't serving me as much as I thought it was, if that makes sense. So it was actually still doing me a disservice by doing that. I don't know if that makes sense and answers your question. It did. It made total sense. And there was a little bit more to my question and I guess a bit more backstory to it. But I, so I, I have a tendency sometimes, and sometimes my clients have ca- cotton on to this, I have a tendency of asking a question half full and then see what they come up with and then I'll tell them uh-huh. why I said what I said. Uh-huh. <laughs> you probably don't ask me, but I'm going with it. <laughs> yeah. Because the what I, what I wanted to just highlight in there, and you highlighted it so perfectly, um, if I look back in my own uh, experiences of uh, operating as a people pleaser, I got to, to see for myself that I was operating from a space that was trying to validate my need to be needed. And the yeah. reason why I just wanted to bring that into the space was because um, when you're people pleasing, at least in my experience, maybe you can relate as well, that... Um, you're not really realizing it. You're just unconsciously just reacting and, and giving and giving and giving. And I, I just want to bring that into the space for anybody watching either the live or the, the replay, just so they can have a bit of a look in for themselves as to where they're operating from. Yeah. And noticing like, what's the purpose of doing this for me? What do I actually get from this? Because even if we don't con- you know, if we don't think we, we do, we always get something from everything we do, whether it's good or bad or not helpful or helpful. We're always meeting some sort of need of our own. But when we yeah. can actually be aware of that and be honest about it and go, oh, actually, that's why I'm also doing it. I think that's where the power comes from. We can kind of bring back that boundary and balance, can't we? 
Yeah, totally. And for me, I get to see that it's, as I said, like it's the need to be needed. Generally, it's coming from a space of loneliness, insecurity, and yeah. kind of just w wanting to be wanted. And, you know, it's, it's very interesting because I've dived into my business and I've isolated myself a lot. And there was times where I would be um, consciously doing that, but not really aware that I was doing that. And then I would get into a space where I'm people pleasing. So I think one of the, the key things around it is don't beat yourself up if you notice that you're operating from this space, but look at what healthy boundaries Human. you can put in place. <laughs> that yeah. too. And how can you <laughs> come up with those needs in a, in a different, maybe more balanced way? Or a way that kind of serves mm. you more on a soul level, not just, a, I guess, an ego level as well helps. <laughs> Even just filling up your cup with things you enjoy that are outside of coaching. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And look, and I think the, the biggest thing, and it's, yeah, and as, as to what you do as well, like it's all about bringing the unconscious to the conscious so that you get to choose in that moment when you get to check in and go, oh, I'm operating from that space again. Okay, well, what do I need to put in place right now so that I can still do what I want to do or do what I'm committing to do from a place of, yeah. um, of balance and groundedness and, and everything to that effect? Yeah, and I love that. I think it's so true that, you know, I think it's the constant journey. There's always little things that will pop up into your mind. And you're like, whoa, okay, I didn't know that was still a thing or I didn't know that was there. Um, and it is totally is about just coming at it with a bit of awareness and compassion rather than going, oh, my God, I'm such a bad person or I'm still not there. You know, what is there? And kind of just realizing that you can still mm. do what you want to do in life, even if you're still working through your own things. It doesn't stop you from being able yeah. to share and help. Yes, I completely love that. And that leads into a question that's just come to mind very elegantly. So what is your process when you catch yourself out of uh, alignment and you're operating from that space? Like what's, what would be that internal? What's the physical, like, what would you do to, uh, I guess, reground and regather yourself? Um, there's a few little things that I do. Um, one is I just sort of notice, I guess, how I've been living over the last week or month and noticing the patterns and behaviors that I've brought into my life, because often they hold a lot of clues to me. Oftentimes I'm either doing a lot of things to avoid. So I notice, okay, I actually need to create some space to sit and be like in that moment or to sit and be with what's coming up for me. Um, so I kind of actually take a little bit of quiet time and, um, and also just kind of readjust, you know, how's my schedule? Am I over committing to lots of things right now? Do I need more time for me or do I need to kind of peel back some things that aren't really necessary? That's kind of what I do first. And then it's kind of going inward and, and, and exploring, you know, what is that little part of me that feels like it's lacking or it's not getting or it's craving? What am I craving? What am I asking for? What am I needing right now? Mm. And what does it make me feel when I'm not getting that? So I inquire a lot and journal a lot and ask myself lots of questions. And when I start to notice, yep. oh, okay, actually when I'm, when I'm doing this because I'm, I'm wanting to feel needed or significant, then it's also coming maybe from a place of, I'm not good enough without that. Or I'm not of value without that. So then I go, okay, well, where's that part of me that feels not, not valuable or not worthy or, or whatever. And then it becomes this process of, um, you know, a sort of self timeliney meditation sort of yep. style, which I take myself on and actually go meet those parts of myself and face them and yeah. feel them, not just go, Oh yeah, see ya. It's more about actually experiencing that feeling and allowing myself to drop in and okay, bringing up unworthiness, we'll feel that unworthiness first. Instead of trying to let it go, mm. feel it first. What is, what is it really trying to teach you? And then from there, it, it loses that sort of power and weird cycle I find when I just drop into it and go, oh, that's what it is. Cool. That's what I'm learning. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It kind of works like that. Yeah. <laughs> Ab that's absolutely powerful. Um, and just the as you were talking about like feeling it and experiencing it, like I just ting tingles all over me from the idea of like when you shine the lights on something, it all of a sudden loses the power of you. And yeah. I think I, if I look back in my own journey and I'm sure there's many people in that get caught up in that cycle as well. And, you know, it's at times we still do. I know I still do. As I said, we're human, but trying to push something down and pretend like it doesn't exist, but it's always going to keep coming back up. And, you know, it could have been the, something that you're the most ashamed about. And you, as soon as you speak it and you voice it, all of a sudden that shame is dissipated. Oh, it's extremely God, powerful. Yeah. Just to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I love it. So, <laughs> yeah, but it, it can obviously be also very uncomfortable. So then it comes back to a great question, just sort of more insight from yourself. Those who are starting out on their journey of um, self-exploration, self-discovery, personal development, whatever you want to, um, I guess, uh, label it as, it's very, very scary to open up and be vulnerable and just uh, like just speak into whatever that comes up out of that random question that I just don't know if I really asked. Yeah. I'm like, where's the question? Where's the inflection on that? Is this a question or a statement? My brain just went sideways. Yeah, I love it. Um, like how to be vulnerable, like how to ha go through that journey and it's, um, yeah, something like yeah, that, I think. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to have a drink. Um, that's a really hard question. I think, you know, I think it's um, it's noticing that you're going to feel resistant and scared and fearful of that vulnerability of, of being open about things or even just about acknowledging things for yourself. It's not easy. I speak about it now like it's, you know, my second language. Like I just do it all the time, right? And it's still tough. I still find it tough when I notice things and I'm like, well, because we all hold these expectations of ourselves and these sort of ideals of ourselves that sometimes we actually fall short of because of we're a hu you know, a whole human being. We've got our, you know, mm. all our bits and pieces and not everything aligns with those those ideals we in those pedestals, right? So I think there's an element of shame we might carry around our little shadows or parts of us that we don't want to be aware of because then we confirm to ourselves, oh, I'm falling short, right? So I think that's where that fear comes up because it's like, well, then am I going to be accepted or loved if I, if I acknowledge that this is a part of me? And I think that's something that comes up. But so I always find that, you know, in the initial stages, it's about feeling that fear. It's the courage, right? Feeling the fear of, yeah, this is scary. But if I don't address this, if I don't confront this and use my courage and my bravery to be open about this, then I might always shame myself for this or I might always... Mm keep myself contained and not fully express who I am or I might stop myself from actualizing my potential or my, you know, whatever it is that I want to do because these things I suppress and hold down. So if anything, you just got to think of right now is painful, but later is going to be so much more beneficial or later would be more painful if I didn't do it now. And that's kind of what I always yeah. do. I'm like, if I didn't do it, what would happen? I'm like, oh, it'd just be worse, way worse. So I just have to do it, you know. And I will create like the yeah. most chaotic, terrible image in my mind of what the future would look like if I didn't do it. And I, I just, I'm like, oh, I couldn't do that. I have to do it now. <laughs> yeah. And then just stop what you're doing and just go and take action. Just go. Oh, if you can't yourself, then find someone who can pull it out of you or who's really good at calling mm. you out on stuff, you know, whether that's a coach or finding someone who knows the stuff can pick it out and help you bring it up because if you can't do it yourself, you know, it's easy to run away from ourselves, right? Sometimes we do need that second person who can just be like, hey, I see you, but I also see that part yeah. of you that's suppressing right now and that needs to come up because <laughs> it's not useful. Absolutely. And I had a mate call me out on some stuff today. <laughs> as perfect. much as, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know, perfect friend. It was good. Um, and I guess, you know, what sort of highlights in what you were just saying there is that it's scary to start off with. Now, I don't know if you have the same experience as what I do now, but I almost look for those, those uh, environments where I can be vulnerable and I can like, walk through more of that darkness because I know what's on the other side of it. And it becomes almost weirdly addictive. I don't know if you have that same experience. Yeah, totally. And even like just thinking about, you know, some of the most amazing coaches and healers and, and therapists I've seen that have held my hand so that I could go and look at my own stuff. And sometimes that's the most powerful thing. Like there's no shame mm. in, in asking for help or saying, hey, I need you to hold my hand right now because I'm so fucking scared, you know? Excuse my language. But it's, you know, it feels that way when you start. You kind of just go, I don't know if yeah. I can look under the plate, under my bed right now, there's a monster. <laughs> and then you look and you realize, yeah. oh my God, it's just a sock. <laughs> this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So getting more into the coaching and, and obviously you made the transition from your job into your coaching business. Now I know the early um, couple of months and 
that time frame of the transition was quite a bit of a struggle. So I'm sure there are people out here that are watching and look, partly myself included. And, you know, I know your story in this part, but I still enjoy hearing it again because it's coming up where I'm almost going to be doing the same thing. So um, just share a little bit from that, that job to the transition to your full-time passion for yourself, obviously as your coaching business. Um, What was that thought process whilst you were in the job? What had you take action? How was it through the transition? And then, you know, now where you're in a stable business. Um, I guess actually what's funny is that I actually met you when I started. So that's so cool. Um, but I guess the transition uh, for me, I kind of, I don't know. I might have just been maybe just a, a touch naive at the time. <laughs> Uh, or maybe just, um, or just had maybe just this really strong, it's like I, I could see where I would be when I'd done it and I had that yep. really strong vision for myself and that was just something I'd always had and I've always felt. And so when I was kind of in this last job that I was in, I was actually at F45 still training people and just holding on to that tiny little bit of my old world so that I could sort of have some sort of balance and stability while I was trying to build this new thing. Um, but what I started to realize was I couldn't, I couldn't be two things at once. It got to this point where there's like this threshold where I couldn't give as much as I wanted in my job that I was doing as a PT or as a group trainer. And I was kind of uh, being, you know, I guess slacker. I was just becoming slack in that place because it wasn't my passion. It wasn't my priority, but it wasn't showing up. And I, I couldn't, I didn't have the energy to show up there and then show up as a coach and then build my business as well as you know do it all and and so in the end I just made this call one day I just almost felt like I was being pushed out as well you know um classes became less and less frequent you know things just started to slip away as sometimes they do and I wasn't enjoying it and I just realized you know what's the point if I if I jump and it doesn't work out I'm sure I can work it out from there you know the worst case isn't really the worst case but if I don't do this now I don't know how much longer I can keep it up. It was just kind of almost like I was forced out really. So I was probably mm-hmm. lucky in that way. But um, yeah, the, I think I think it just got to this point where I just kind of was like, I need to get out. Like I need to do this full time. And if I don't, I can't make it what I need it to be because one, there's also that little bit of safety having the other job. So for yep. me, it was like, oh, I don't really need to do that work because I've got already this. So once that was totally gone, I had no none of that safety net there, I actually had to make it work. And if I didn't, I would, you know, find myself in a really uncomfortable position. So I think it was almost, yep. and that's not really the best strategy long-term, definitely wasn't a long-term thing for me to have that as my motivational strategy. But at that time it really worked and it yep. really pushed me out. And really just the fear of if I don't do this, I'm going to suffer. So I've got to do it basically. And I just put myself in that place of, of having that leverage to go, well, I've quit this job, I can't do it anymore. I have to do this. And that was kind of how it went for me. Mm. Um, But I was just excited. I just was so excited to see what it could be. So I think it was just that real excitement of, oh, my God, this is going to be amazing. So I'm just going to do it. (laughs) Bit of reckless abandon. And that's the thought. (laughs) (laughs) Well, look, it worked out in the end. And and knowing you personally, I know there's no way that it wouldn't work out. Your determination and your focus and your drive is second to none. So it was always going to work out. Oh, There's no, no questions about that. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, yeah uh, and then I and it, I, found a, I found a really good coach as well who helped me because there were certain things I didn't know how to do. Like I wasn't that good at selling at the time. So I used pretty much all my last bit of money to, to get that, but that helped. So it kind of all worked out, but it was a lot of risk taking. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's interesting and it's exciting. And you, the way that you speak about F45 is kind of where I'm at at the moment. And it's, you're sort of looking at it. Well, I, I'm looking at it going, you know, where would I be if I didn't have this? And, you know, there's no, no ideal time. And we'll see what the next few weeks have in store. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's just very interesting. <laughs> Could be some very, very interesting things. Um, yeah. Now, in that and making that transition, um, especially into a coach, because 
I don't want to necessarily bring age into it, but I want to bring age into it as well, because I think there's some people out there who feel that they may be too young to be taken too seriously. Now, what is your experience when it comes to age in like stepping into being a coach? Because some people may look at somebody and go, well, you've got this number of years versus some of these years, you don't have the life experience. But then of course, like there's the other part, just because you're older doesn't mean you've got more experience. But what is your, yeah. what has your, I guess, experience in that space been? Um, a couple of things. I think if you own, own what you're doing and you have, and you back yourself, you come across with a sense of certainty. And I think it's not actually age that people are after, it's certainty. When people feel uncertain, Ooh, they'll that. question your age. It's not really about your age, but it's about your wisdom and your certainty, right? When you're older, you've got that sort of level of, I know who I am. I'm, I'm, you know, I own myself a little bit more than perhaps when we're younger, we're a little bit more unsure and uncertain. So I think when we come across with a level of certainty as a coach and a level of, yes, I actually do know my stuff and I do know what I'm doing and I do know how to help you, then I don't think anyone ever questions that. I've actually, to be honest, mm. I've never been asked my age coaching and I'm not really the oldest person. So you know, I think that kind of comes with it. And also knowing your stuff's really important, working on being a really good coach and making sure you're always mm. improving as a coach and, and um, upskilling is a really valuable thing to know as well. And knowing that whoever comes in is going to get what they need at that time, even if you don't know everything, it's, it's always perfect. Like I think there's no perfect coach. There's no set place we have to be before we coach. But we do need a level of obviously skill and understanding and being able to help people. But at the yeah. same time, we don't know everything that's still okay as well. And I look yeah. back when I first started coaching to now, like, oh, completely different coach, you know? Like I look back and go, God, I can't believe that's what I said or that's what I did. <laughs> but it still worked for that person. It still helped that person. So it really didn't yeah. actually matter. And now the people that are coming to me now, obviously I have a level of, of things or challenges that they want to you know, overcome that match my skill set. So it's almost like you just attract who is right for you at each time, I think as well. And mm. trusting that. Yeah. That is powerful. And I know there's been times where I've uh, had a client in front of me and thought, Oh my gosh, like, how am I going to work with this? Because it's something that is something very new and trusting yourself is a massive, massive thing, whether it's coaching, whether it's anything, just trusting your intuition and tapping into that, mm. uh, that guidance and just really, uh, you know, trusting what comes through. Um, mm. Yeah. I'll come to and that one in a second, I... Gemma. Hey. Oh. Sorry, go. No, <laughs> sorry. Was... Moments where you kind of are like caught off a little bit and you're like, oh, my God, I don't know what the hell do I do here or, or wow, this is something I haven't experienced before. I think they're, they're perfect moments because they really, they put you in that sort of growth and expansive place of, okay, I need to step up now. I need to draw on everything that I know and relax into it and kind of, trust that I can do this. And then when I finish that, I need to go and learn. If I really just go, I still don't know what the hell I was doing in that session. It's a sign that you need to keep learning, keep, you know, searching for the knowledge that you need, go back to your books yeah. or go and outsource, you know, the internet's a powerful tool. There's a lot of cool resources out there to find. So mm. I think it's, yeah, it's about that too. Absolutely. And I'll ask this question and it will tie into what Gemma's has asked here about being older. Is that a barrier? Um, you mentioned about age not really mattering. It's more about you having certainty in yourself and your um, your knowledge in your tools and things like this. Where did you get and how how did that work for you? Have you always been somebody who's been certain of who you are as an individual? Or if not, like how have you developed that so that you can be so rock solid in yourself now and age is just not of a concern? Uh, yeah, I think it's like when you think when you're thinking about that insecurity of your age, then it's about exploring that a little bit deeper and going, well, what is it about my age that I'm fearing people are going to judge me for? And looking at that as your, you know, that's just your surface, but what's underneath that? What are you really afraid people are going to find out about you if they find out your age? What will that be? You know, what would what is it that you think they're thinking of you by expressing your age or what you, and then looking at that insecurity and going, if it's, oh, that, you know, I'm, I won't be able to relate or that I won't be good enough or, you know, trying to look for what is really the, the thing that I'm most scared of. 
And I think a few things, like I don't, I think I've always been semi-certain of myself a little bit. Um, but I've, uh, I think it's because I work really hard and I, I really study a lot and I, I immerse myself fully in things and really make sure I learn as much as I can. So I'm confident that I have the knowledge and I show up each time and know that as I do it, I get better. And I, as I do it, I get more certain. I think certainty comes with experience as well and ke- and keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. But there's also a level of creating that for yourself by visualizing it. You know, I do a lot of visualization. Before I used to do sessions, I would visualize myself as that coach of who I wanted to be. Who is the coach that knows herself, who's confident, who has the tools, you know, who can show up and be, and, and you know, be present but all of those things you know who is the person I'm trying to become or that I feel is most right for this what I'm about to do and stepping into that and visualizing it and and tapping into that place because it's there even if we don't think it is we can create that state within ourselves like like that so it's just having that tool to do that as well and and doing the work on yourself and removing any of those things that tell you you're not good enough or those insecurities expose your insecurities and and work through them again don't run away from them or try and go well because of this i'm not going to do it well because of that i'm actually going to do it because that's going to bring up the learning and what i need from it you know yeah i don't yeah, know if that absolutely. really answered the- <laughs> it, it did and it was around just knowing your stuff um and not allowing age to be a barrier and, and being mindful of any other barriers and look i know if i look back a couple of years ago well there was a lot of stories and things that I had around why I can't do what I'm doing and just every single day, just chipping away at it, giving a little bit more yep. value and just building my own trust in myself as an individual and also as a coach and also somebody who is there to support and be able to guide others as well. So I think Gemma, from your perspective, if we haven't answered it, um, drop me a message afterwards or Yasmin, if you wish to. Um, but yeah, it's just really about, um, just following your instinct, following your intuition. If you feel called yeah. to share something, as long as you've got, depending on the which way it is, if it's a case of openly on social media, well then yes, if you feel called to share some particular words, mm-hmm. by all means share it. If there's a particular individual, get their permission to be able to share it um, and yeah. be very mindful. Cause I know that's also another one that I've gone down and you learn very quickly yeah. when you, um, when you shouldn't coach somebody when they don't want to be coached. And even something I really love is that there's people for everyone. So there Mm. might be some people that might not resonate with you because of your age, but there'll be so many people who will. So you can't really use it as your barrier because you're like, if I don't share this message or I don't do this thing, even no matter what age I am, there are people that would resonate with me that get that miss out on what I have to offer because I'm not doing that. So that's what I always think about as well as like by not doing this, Am I actually stopping others from being able to find me and being able to resonate with me? Because there will be people Mm. that will. That's a really, and I've got tingles all over my body as you just share that in the, in the sense of my own experience as well with there's, um, there's always, and this was part of my own validation, I guess, to build my confidence to step into it. Like, you know, the, what value do I have? There is always somebody who has been, or is going through what you have been, been through. So you, there's always somebody that you can help. And I know there's been so many times where I've randomly been called, like sort of like had these words to post up on social media. And I'm like, I don't know, this is just what I'm going to go with. Yeah. Just like I ask half, <laughs> half-baked questions. <laughs> and there's somebody that messages me and goes, wow, that was really what I needed to hear today. So I think it's just following your guidance, following your intuition and just going with it. And yeah. um, eventually Sorry. you'll work it out. I know for yeah. myself, I'm still trying to work this thing out. I'm guessing you may be as well. <laughs> every every month, it's a new sort of thing I'm working out. <laughs> totally. Um, you know, speaking of working out, obviously you've got an, a new uh, project on the horizon for next year, linking with your coaching business. Um, yeah. Talk to me about Bali. Oh, um, I'm so excited, actually. So very classic me style and the girl that I'm running it with or the woman that I'm running it with, Mandy, a really good friend of mine um, who also does something very similar, but um, she's also in the yoga space and that sort of thing. Uh, We were both on holiday together. So I went to visit her in Christchurch and then we went to Bali together just for, you know what, a super fun, chilled out, relaxed, let your hair down sort of trip. So it was really just about us rejuvenating, re-energizing, that sort of thing. While we were there, uh, 
you know, we started to think about, you know, we need to do more things that bring us so much joy. You know, like when we seem to do things that bring us joy and excite us, everything seems to work out pretty well. And, you know, sometimes we get caught up in the should, I should do this, I shouldn't do that, or maybe it's not the right time, or maybe I'm, you know, we all have those thoughts. So we kind of started thinking what would be really cool and fun that we could do together that would be, you know, beneficial for everyone, you know, helping people, but we're also having fun and we're in a place we love. And I was like, why don't we do a Bali retreat? You know, that could be amazing. And so, you know, we were like, yeah, 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 awesome. So we decided to do it. Um, like every decision I make it spur of the moment. Yes, let's just do it. And we just kind of created it. We didn't find, we were going to do it in Chango at first. And then we went to um, Uluwatu together and had a super beautiful transformative experience there ourselves and realized, I think this is the place for it. So uh, we're going to be running it on the cliffs in a beautiful resort in Uluwatu, um, just super peaceful and so much nature everywhere. And it's just, it's such a beautiful energy, that space. And when we saw it, we were just like, yes, this is it. And um, it's just a place where we, we realize that, you know, with all of the coaching we've done, you get such amazing results with people, but you imagine what it would be like if people were out of their anchors and out of their environments that kind of keep them held in those patterns. What if they were out of that pattern? What if they're in a beautiful space? What if they're around two people holding space and creating such an energy for them to transform and evolve and shift. And so that's why we kind of thought actually a retreat is a really amazing way to produce really rapid change because you're in a full intensive immersive space. And, you know, everyone in that room as a collective is also there for the same intent. Everyone's going to show up as that, yes, I want to transform and I want everyone else to do the same. And I'm, you know, I'm giving that vibe out. So it's, it's such a more potent energy being in a group as well. So we kind of just, you know, all of it sort of started to make sense and, you know, waking up with some beautiful, you know, yoga flow and then going into some breakthrough work and coaching and then, you know, going away and having your free time and then coming back and doing a meditation and then going into something else, you know, it just felt like the best thing you could do. So, and I was thinking <laughs> if I was a client, I'd want to do that. Um, so yep. it's going to be a pretty potent six days in Uluwatu. Um, but everything's covered, you know, you don't have to worry about a thing. It's all there for you. Beautiful welcome ceremony, that sort of thing. But it's just a place where you can really rejuvenate and relax, but also go through a really powerful transformation in your mind, your body, your, you know, your spirit and everything like that. And really just get that clarity and, and connection back to your inner wisdom and, and what's really something that you want for yourself. And what's really, what are you really craving? What do you really wanting and going after that and then being able to create that that plan of attack to get it when you leave so that's kind of what it's all about which i'm excited for <laughs> yeah that's super exciting yeah because i saw you over in nz and then i was like wait what now next minute is a bali treat what she's in bali <laughs> what <laughs> I know, I'm it was <laughs> it was awesome it was so good to watch and yeah definitely yeah. some downtime that you, you thoroughly required so um, I saw on Facebook, I think it was today when it comes to the retreat, is the early bird still around or like, where's all of that at? And, um, yeah, just, ex I, I get, so go into a little bit of information and then I'll get you to put the details and stuff in the comments. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Um, so the early bird actually ends on the 1st of September, which is this weekend. However, for the viewers on here, I'll extend it for a week. So you've got one extra week. Um, to harness that beautiful deal, um, you're going to save yourself probably about four to $500. So it's a really big chunk of the expenses, just depending on where you are in Australia it will depend on flights and things like that. Um, but basically it's all inclusive. You've got transport to and from the airport. You've got all meals, beautiful vegan, organic meals every day. Um, yoga every day, transformative meditations every day. We've got a woman coming to do sound activations as well. Amazing, nice. amazing, powerful sound activations. She's just next level. Like there is nothing like her on the planet. So we can't, we're just so over the moon to have her coming with us and she'll be offering one-on-one -on -one services. So will we. So uh, yeah, come along for the journey if you're ready for it. Um, but we definitely just, you know, it's not going to be a huge amount of people. So there are limited spots um, just because we want the potency to be massive and the value to be mm. there. 
Um, but it's definitely worth checking out and I'll post the link to the site and all of that so you guys can have a look at the details. Um, but yeah, register if you're really interested because it will be phenomenal. And I'm not just yeah, saying that because I'm biased. <laughs> no, heck, I'm even half tempted to be there as well. We'll see. Yeah, we shall see what happens. <laughs> Who knows? Depending on what happens in the next few weeks, I may be in Bali anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> what what dates are is it? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, it's next <laughs> April. Next April the twenty first to the twenty sixth, uh, twenty seventh. Sorry. So there's a fair bit of time to plan and stuff. We do have payment plans available, so it does make it viable for everyone. Um, but yeah, just get in quickly because they are running out. I think we're almost half sold out, and we've only launched it a couple weeks ago. So. That's they're exciting. feeling fast, but so it'll be good. <laughs> yeah. But there may be a next one, maybe another one. So you never know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I have to get involved with this one. <laughs> yeah. I'll talk to you privately. <laughs> yeah. It sounds good. So as we start to wrap this up and again, these, these chats could go on forever. Um, but I figure we should probably put some sort of a time limit on them. Um, yeah. Where can, obviously we've got, we're on Facebook here. So if anybody of my friends who doesn't know Yasmin and resonates with her, by all means, go and throw a friend request and that side of things and connect I, with her. I, yeah, always happy. <laughs> and then as far as like Instagram goes, whereabouts, what's your uh, name on Instagram? Um, my name on Instagram is just my name, like on Facebook. So it's just um, Yasmin underscore Eve. And you can find my actual Facebook page at Holistic Hub Perth. And the same with my mm. website, holistichubperth.com. So super simple. Yeah. yeah. And, and reach out and work through those. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, so like parting wisdom. Now I'm not going to set any boundaries on this. Like whatever's there for you to share um, as some parting wisdom for those who are watching. Mm. Um, I think the parting wisdom, which has come up a lot for me and some clients, you know, recently is I think just reminding yourself that it's not a race and that, you know, everything unfolds as it's meant to and not to put so much pressure and, and harshness, like be gentle with yourself a little bit and give yourself a little bit of compassion. You know, you're human and you're doing the best that you can often, often. So, you know, it's kind of give yourself that little bit of compassion and leniency whilst also owning your stuff. That would be my my parting wisdom. <laughs> nice. I can just sense that balancing act in all of that and I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's a hard one. <laughs> it's a hard one to balance, <laughs> but try. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a good starting point. Well, I am so, so grateful for your time. I am so I was been waiting for this all, all week and or actually even when I reached out to you and I was like when are you free? Because I know that that like even teeing up a time was going to be a bit of a challenge. So thank you so, so much. I really do appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks so much for having me on. And thanks for thinking of me always and, and sharing your space with me. More than welcome. More than welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure. All right. I will leave you to it. I will speak to you thanks later you. and I'll inbox. I look forward. <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. And by all means, put those details in the, in the comments as well. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right. See ya.